One of our subscribers asked, can you offer another tip on gradations using warm and cool temps along with light to darks and what color to use before it goes into shadow in greens? Well, let's play with some greens. Greens are really elusive because there are two things that are, we have taken into consideration. One, what happens to the paint when we start lightening a green or making it lighter? And then the other is what is actually happening in nature, uh, especially in the foliage of nature when, there is, when it's under bright sunlight and yet we see variations in the greens under the light and variations in greens under the shadow. So what do we do with the paint to make it translate what we're looking at? So I'll give you a few little pointers of what to expect. Now, this is going to apply to just about any medium you're going to use because anytime you add white to any other color, whether it's watercolor or pastel, acrylics, oils, or gouache, when you add white to it, the white subtracts out the warmth and so we have to compensate for that. Now I'll get to that to, in just a minute but this person asked about shadows first ask about the gradations that we see that goes from shadows to light or lights to shadows. So I want to explore a few things with you to show you how to think about this thing. This is not all the answers but this will get you going. To start with the greens learn to think with the color wheel uh, you know, I emphasize this in so many of the quick tips. Learn to think with the color wheel. The color wheel is going to be your best friend towards figuring out what to do. So if we're in green here in the color wheel, then as things move into shadow, two things happen. They will get cooler. Of course they get darker. That's one thing. So maybe three things happen. But as they're getting darker, they'll get cooler. That means that some color that's moving in the direction towards blue needs to be added in. And the other thing that's happening is it gets less neutral. What that means is some color that has the complement in it needs to be added in. Now when you do those two things it feels more like shadow or greens in shadow. If you just add black it will look dark. It may look the same value as the shadow but it won't feel like shadow. Um, or if you just add a darker green, same thing. So unless that darker green has in it a little bit more blue and a little bit more of a complement. So that's the thing to remember in greens. I'm going to give you just a little bit of an illustration here to show you what I'm talking about. So I've got two greens here on the palette. One is a more of a neutral, um, a natural green, the kind of green you might find in nature. This is a middle value. So I'm just going to make a little bit of a splotch here to show was it's kind of a, a um, it's closer to middle value it's not exactly middle value now let's just take this and look at the principle I just talked about so on the palette I'll pull some of this color this by the way if you want to know what that color is um, this I have taken the Rembrandt Viridian four parts of the, uh, Rembrandt, Rembrandt Viridian and I've added one part of Rembrandt Transparent Oxide Red and that gives me this uh, character of green. Now, let's go to the principle I just talked about. Remember I said as it goes into shadow, this would be just at the, uh, you might call the, the shallow shadow um, area of, of, of the shadow of green. Alright, if as it goes into shadow, I said it needs to move towards blue. I'm going to add just a little bit. Now this doesn't mean a whole bunch of blue. It means just a little bit. So I'm going to add just a little bit of blue. This is ultramarine blue I'm adding in here. And you see on the palette as I add that little bit of blue, it gets darker. But I need to do something else. So well, first of all, let's see what happens if I put a little bit of that. See there? It gets darker. It begins to get a little darker. It begins to feel a little bit more like shadow. Now let's keep moving it. I'm going to add just a little bit more of the blue. And as it moves deeper in the shadow, it begins to lose its, its, its saturation. 
that's when we begin to add the complement. So I'm going to move into alizarin crimson, which is a red. Red is um, complement of green. Just a little, not much. Alizarin crimson is a very strong color to begin with. So I'll add just a little, and I'll test it here on the palette. If it goes totally, if it goes towards red, I've added too much. So if I pull it over a little bit more, now watch what happens. We can put it right here, and you can see that gives us that dark shadow green, the feeling of the dark shadow green. So we have here the person asked about gradation of warm and cool. We have here the gradation that moves from this uh, middle value or dark middle value of green towards the dark. It also has the feeling of shadow. Now, if we wanted to get it in really, really deep shadow where all the color disappears, we can go into more of the red, more of the blue, and we're going to get something that looks like black right here. That will translate, in a painting, that will translate as deep, deep shadow. You don't see a lot of that, um, but you will see that if you use that, it feels more like shadow than it would be if you use black or something like that. So, now, but what about when it goes towards light? What about when things in green begin to move into light? Now, this I'm talking about things that are in a direct light, direct sunlight. This, this is not the kind of, um, well, this doesn't work as well under uh, overcast. There's a different thing you do under overcast, so just hold, hold on to that thought for a moment. Let's move in this direction. What happens in nature when, th when green is under a bright sunlight? What happens is it moves the opposite direction. The green begins to pick up more and more yellow. And you can see that for yourself, especially if you look at a forest, a green forest in the foliage, and you compare the color of what you're seeing in light with the color of what you see in shadow you'll see that moving more and more towards yellow. Well, a lot of people will just add white. Let me show you what happens if you just add white. And we're working the same green here. I'm going to put a little bit of this over the palette. I'm just going to add just a little bit of white to it. Okay, what happens when you add just a bit of white? I'm going to put this right up here. You see, it begins to get dull. Now, you might see something of that green in nature, especially if you add just a little bit more white, especially if you see light reflecting on leaves, leaves that have, that have a shiny surface, you might see some light reflecting. And in that case, just adding the white to it might be sufficient. And it might go anywhere from something like we're seeing here, add a little bit more white. It might even go a little lighter to something you're seeing here. And in some cases, you might see it appearing to be totally white. Now that you can look for as reflections off of uh, foliage when you're when, when it's under bright sunlight, right there. Now, but let's let's look at what would happen in, uh, on the on the leaves themselves when the light's shining on them. When you add white into green, you subtract the yellow out. So. We, we would add not only white, but also a bit of yellow. Now this is hence a yellow light. I'm adding just a little bit back in. I'm going to move back up now. because This is as it's moving into sunlight. You might see something like this. It begins to get a little lighter. But it's also beginning to get a little bit more yellow. Now just adding yellow by itself might be too garish. So again, you observe. What does it? What's the character of the green that you're looking at? Now, as we go on up, add a little bit more yellow to the white, and you might see something like this. Now, this is the get that little bit more, just a little bit lighter. Here we go, right there. And by adding, pulling, pulling the yellow back into it, you can see the difference. The very subtle difference between this green and this green. Uh, which has no yellow added to it. And then we can continue. If the sun is shining really, really bright, we can continue to keep the yellow in there. In some cases, you might even see it go more towards yellow, and you'll get something like this. Not quite light enough. 
something like this. Now, now this is the gradation that I think this is the gradation that the um, that the viewer is asking for. It goes from it goes uh, the gradation goes from dark to light. That's the value, and it goes from in hue. It's cool to a little warmer 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 to a little warmer, and that's what happens when green is in direct light. Now, one more little thing here. I said if the green is under subdued light. What if it's under um, what what if it's under a overcast sky? Well, in the first place, you see it under the overcast sky. Part of the greenness is going to be subtracted from it anyway. So in that case, you would mix a green that is um, that's slightly duller than the green you're looking at. Um, the way you would do that is to come back to the original green. I'm coming back right in here to this original green. I'm going to add just a little bit of its complement to it. And I hope I didn't overdo that. Just a little bit of its complement and a little bit of white right in there between that little bit of complement and that little bit of light you'll probably see a green maybe something like that under an overcast sky you won't see well for the most part there will always be an exception but un, uh, under an overcast sky or in the rain or in the fog you're not going to see this bright green so you look for the degree to which it loses its saturation and so it might lose its saturation to this or you add a little bit more oh, that's way over too much red you be careful with that red you could add any red I'm just using alizarin crimson here um, it's, it's just a random choice okay let's uh, add a little bit more white into that you can see on the palette here what's happening we get this there we go. That's a, that's even more olive green. So just keep in mind that when green is under the bright light, you're going to have a gradation that goes from the darkest dark to the lightest light. It's going to be from a cool, a cool to warmer, and it's actually going to be less saturated as it gets darker. It really gets a little less saturated as it gets lighter. But if you use that little principle when you're working with green first of all don't do it by formula allow your eyes to tell you what you're seeing and then once your eyes tell you what you're seeing you can use this little principle if as it's going into shallow it get, gets a little cooler and a little bit more neutral the deeper it goes into shadow the more neutral and the cooler it gets as it's moving towards light on the color wheel it's going to get warmer it's going to move more towards yellow and so you can use those principles, uh, let me say that again, use, uh, move towards yellow and of course adding the white and the yellow into that is going to raise that value. So you can use those principles and then observe the color that you're looking at, play with the mixtures within those principles and you'll be surprised at how close you can get to the green that you're looking at. Hope you enjoyed this quick tip. If you have questions or a suggestion for a quick tip, leave us a comment right down here in the YouTube comment box. And take a trip over to dyingminds.com and look at all the things we have there for you, including full-length video tutorials. And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter so you'll always be informed of our latest adventures. And thanks for watching.